Hi, my name is Parag Pal and welcome in lecture number 2 of module 1. In this video, I am going to discuss about the partial safety factors, the collapse, the serviceability, okay, and the various definitions because it is very important to learn because these particular things we can use in our design pattern, right? So let's get started. So as partial safety factor, we know that there's a two material basically, the concrete and steel. There's a lots of material available, but we use the concrete and steel. So concrete is having the partial safety factor of 1.5 and steel is having the partial safety factor of 1.15. These two factors are specified by the Indian IS codes, right? Now there is a different load combinations we have. These two load combinations are comes under the limit state of collapse and limit state of serviceability. It is very important to know what is limit state of collapse and limit state of serviceability. Look, the limit state of collapse is always for the horizontal member. Okay, like there is in collapse, we also look for the horizontal and vertical member. But here we are only talking about the cracking portion, cracks portion, right? Due to the torsion and all that thing. But in serviceability, the it is for the short term effect. Okay, like you can see, it is for the deflection and vibrations. Okay, so the load combinations is like that. If we have dead load plus lie load, so in collapse you need to use a partial safety factor as a 1.5 if it is dead load plus wind load so you need to work you need to use the factor 1.5 or 0.9 if you need to use the dead load plus lie load plus wind load then your factor would be 1.2 so what you have to do is you need to multiply this 1.2 with all these particular additions okay you need to multiply 1.5 with this all this addition so you will get a factored load what does factor load does uh, what is the meaning of factor load i told you yesterday in last video right so this kind of scenario we have in serviceability also there is a different kind of loads uh, factors are given so you need to multiply with that value and you can apply that load combinations to your overall structure because why the load combinations are very important you cannot analyze your structure with only one single combination or single dead load or single lie load you need to provide the combinations then and only then your overall analysis will took up the overall building load, right? It building load definitely consists of the dead load plus lie load. Okay, the floor finish, okay, the roof load, all this load come under the dead load. Lie load is means what? The load which is the movable. Okay, now. So limit state is basically under the two categories, the collapse and the serviceability. Collapse means the flexurer, that means cracking itself. Compression is meant for the reduction of the volume. Okay, so it means from top and bottom we are applying force towards the uh, towards each other. Okay, not flow not flow direction towards directions. In shear means what the cracking and torsion means what the rotation. So these four things come under the collapse. In serviceability there is a deflection, there is a cracking and there is a vibrations. Okay, so these things come under the serviceability. So this uh, I am uh, skipping this one because this is not important at all. So now. The limit state of collapse in flexure, it work like this, okay? So what exactly it is, you can see in this diagrammatical representation, in this photographs, the universal testing machine applying the load, okay, at certain distances and that particular structure is got failure at certain point where the plane not parallel, not axial direction, not parallel to the plane. Okay, because these you can see from this universal testing machine load application, if you can draw the normal, okay, that normal is just click over here. This load can break over here also, can break over here also. But at this particular point, okay, the normal, you can see, you can take a one single scale. Okay, if you, if you just mold it on above direction so at the particular section where the board direction at like the angle become very less at that particular point this particular section will break up right so same scenario happened with this flexure also now there is some adjunctions like as i told you the plane section normal to the axis the remain plane after bending so same thing happened over here the planes this is a plane section which is normal to the axis after breaking it is plain after breaking also okay so we need to take the 0.0035 value as a maximum strain in bending during the outermost compression factor remember one thing 
the relationship between the compression stresses distribution in concrete and the strain look stresses is different thing stresses mean the application of load okay due to which the cracks will form and strain means what the volumetric changes in a concrete so there is a relationship between the stress and strain which which can be the rectangular trapezoidal and parabolic distribution understand remember one thing that tensile strain in concrete we always neglect but we will definitely look for the compression one okay now you can see the partial safety factor which is gamma m is always equals to the 1.15 what we consider during the design also now you can see this particular you know formula how this formula derive i am not going in a depth because we know everyone how what is this formula and what exactly it is we want the maximum strain in the tensile reinforcement in the section at a failure okay shall not be less than this particular value so whatever the strain in your material or in your structural element in your tensile reinforcement that should be more than this value okay that should be more than this value if your value is less than this your section will be get definitely failure understand so you can see this graphical uh, diagrammatical representation and the y direction you can see the stresses and the x direction you can see the strain so as your stresses increase till 0.002 strain there is a various kind of the stresses and various different behavior you can see but at this portion they lose their behavior they lose their original behavior because before this parabolic curve what is representing that if you are applying the load and releasing it it will come they will come their original position but after this particular strain after this 0.002 strain they will not regain their own shape it means they come under the plus they lose their plasticity behavior okay so that's particular thing represented over here so same thing is that if your section if your section not withstanding with this condition then and only then you will lose your tensile reinforcement you will lose your section it means you need to follow this particular function so fy is nothing but your stresses and this is it means strain 1.15 is a factor of the partial safety and 0.002 is a strain factor okay now you can see this particular diagram it is a stress strain relationship of the steel it def it reflecting that as stresses increases strain also increases but at certain point at after the 0.002 value they rem stress remain same but st and stresses also remain same okay now you can see this diagrammatical representation of a singly reinforced beam what does it means that what is reflecting it reflecting that the stresses and strain okay topmost and bottommost direction so strain in singly reinforced beam is given by 0.87 fy upon es plus 0.002 and at topmost portion it is given by 0.0035 understand the stresses at the bottom is given by 0.85 fy and the stresses at the top is given by 0.446 epsk this value we will use in our uh, during design calculations but usually this all calculations will done by the software itself so but we need to know what is a basic phenomenon right now you can see the diagrammatical representation where the limit state of collapse in compression work like this compression is meant what we are applying the forces toward directions or outer mode direction due to which due to which the size may get increase or decrease respectively okay so here we are applying the load our dead load is acting on a body okay at the top bottom direction due to which our overall section cannot carry that particular load and that is not parallel to the plane also that's why this kind of the sections may bombard or section may get failure okay now it is very important to discuss about the eccentricity what is eccentricity most of the people not even talk about the eccentricity as you can see during construction of the home when we are lay the pcc bed okay after that we the 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 white lines what we hook up in the uh, what we hook up during the layout planning the both crossing point with that crossing point with we drop the plumb plumb box okay or plumb ball which mark an impression okay at that particular pcc lay 
or PCC bed. That particular point, which means what? On that particular point, our column will transfer the load. Eccentricity point means what? Eccentricity is a distance which is from the center to the load acting position. Okay, so this from this to this, it is a eccentricity distance, and this point, our building load will transfer to the bottom. So, what does it mean? Now, the main design start from here. Okay, understand? You can see the lots of the time the column sizes may vary. It could be a rectangular one, it could be the square one. Why? It depends upon the eccentricity. If your eccentricity of the load is away from the your center point, it definitely will increase your column dimension. And you need to increase your column dimension because the wind load action need to be verified and need to be considered during this construction activity. Understand? So remember one thing that E is equals to L upon 500 plus lat lateral dimension upon 30 where E minimum is 20. Always remember that the minimum eccentricity is given assigned by the IS code is 20 mm. Okay, not more than that. Understand? We will look after the, our design uh, drafting. So you can see this load. This is the only load applicable. But PU is meant what? It is a factored load. Okay, factored load means what? Factored load means it is multiplied by the 1.5 partial safety facts. Okay, it is multiplied by 1.5 or 1.15. Understand? So this formula given by the IS code itself, which is 0.4 FCK into AC plus 0.67 FY into ASC. Okay, so here PU is a axial load, which is a factored one. FCK is a characteristic compressive strength of the concrete. AC is an area of concrete. Okay, FY is a characteristic strength of the compression reinforcement and ASC is means area of longitudinal reinforcement for column. Okay, this formula is only for column. You can see the limit state of collapse in shear. Okay, so we are applying at the center this particular value, and under a certain position, we got a crack. So, what does it mean? What we are doing actually, we are applying the ultimate load over here in north and south directions. We are applying the ultimate load, and we are recording at what particular load we are our material is getting breakdown. Breakdown is what the crack forms. So, if we are designing for the 10 kN and your member got cracks during the material investigation at 8 kN, it means your material, your mix design is not appropriate. You need to rechange, you need to improve your quality, you need to improve your mix design. If you are using M20, under M20, this particular terminology happen, so you need to improvise or you need to increase your mix design. Understand? Now, the nominal shear stresses, which is given by the tau V, Okay, this is the IS particular uh, given by the IS code. So the formula is VU upon BD. VU is nothing but shear forces due to design load. Whatever the design, whatever the shear forces we are getting, the shear, shear, the shear diagram what we are getting, that you need to put over here. Okay, the shear forces due to design load, whatever, whatever we got, divided by the breadth of the member. Which, which for the flange section should be taken at the BW. If, if it is a T section, you, you need to take BW. And D is the effective depth. Okay, it is V upon B into D. Right. Now, these are the square strength. It is a table number 19, clause 40.2.1, 40.2.2, okay, to 41.4.3. These particular clauses, under these clauses, this particular table number 19, which is a design square strength of concrete tau C, Newton per mm square is given. So you can see this particular 100 minimum AST, 100 AST by BD, okay, this particular value is available over here with respect to that the grade are specified. Okay, if you are using M20, so this tau C value, okay, it is tau V and this is tau C, the design share, this is the tau C equals to 100 AS upon BD. Okay, the formula for tau C is this one. Okay, so if your tau C is point 5 and if you are using the M15 grade of concrete, so your concrete grade would be 0 0.46. It means your tau C value will 0 0.46. Understand? Now, remember one thing. Whenever your nominal shear stresses is less than the shear strength, as per the table number 19 as 456, the shear design done according to the minimum shear criteria. 
okay whatever your minimum share criteria with respect to that you design the share it means cracking design you did okay that means if it is nominal share stresses is are less than the share stress, it means tau v is less than tau c okay then you did according the minimum share criteria but if tau v is greater than tau c okay then your share stresses share design is done accordingly is code clause 40.4 page number 72 okay there is a particular you know procedure if this if this condition occur then you need to go for one condition your or calculation which is which is specified in page number 72 now there is a codal provision for enforcement the minimum reinforcement for beam is given by as upon bd equals to 0.85 upon fy and maximum reinforcement it is 0.04 b into d so if you are finalize your design you need to check this particular value column minimum reinforcement given by 0.8 by 100 into b into d that means it is the 80 percentile and ac percentage of the it means 20 percentage of the overall column concrete design and the 6 percentage of the maximum okay now slab is what the 0.15 of the total cross sectional area if you are using the mile steel bar okay so your cross sectional area the 0.15 percentage of the cross sectional area you need to assign the minimum reinforcement okay and if you are using the hfsd bar so you need to assign 0.12 percentage of the cross sectional area reinforcement okay now this kind of the building plan we will prepare we will discuss okay how to fix the column position that is one of the important questions what arise raised a uh, long time so first one is a generally corner columns because the wind action may act on the corner column and due to this the deflections vertical deflections okay the effective deflections may occur so that's why we look for the you know columns orientations to avoid very long beam obviously we are we will try to avoid the long beam constructions that why we provide the column position po orientations okay at major beam junctions if there is a very big junction t junctions okay like primary beam which transport load to the column at that junction we need to assign proper column positions the secondary beam it means what which transport load to the primary beam at that particular position we need to assign the co column position okay and also we provide the column for the aesthetic view of the structure okay so guys today we are going to stop over here okay in next video i will talking about the load calculations and uh, rest of the things okay i hope you watch video properly if you have any doubt please ask me thank you